Well, just in time for Election Day, a send-off for the fictional House of Cards president, Frank Underwood. A headstone has been set up at a cemetery in Gaffney, and fans of the Netflix series have been stopping by to pay their respects. The House of Cards has generated a lot of interest and brought a lot of people to Gaffney, South Carolina. A new headstone at Oakland Cemetery reads Francis J. Underwood, 46th President of the United States. Of course, in reality, there are only 45 presidents. Gaffney Flores is placing flowers at the grave a few times a week, and there was even a, an obituary in the local newspaper. The new season of House of Cards was released Friday. So everybody who watches House of Cards, do you... Do you well, now it? you know what happened. <laughs> Well, I think we yeah, all knew yeah. what happened. Yeah, it happened last yeah. season, right? Right. Yeah, I think so, yeah. The Kevin Spacey situation kind of drove that, and that's what happened. Well, so how about weather for Election Day? Because um, really, when it comes to temperature, you don't have to worry about standing out. It's, it's yeah. not a long morning, line to deal with, yeah. And it looks like visibilities are getting a lot better right now good. as we go through the morning. So that's some good news. The breeze is starting to pick up a bit, so that's mixing the air. So a lot of the fog is starting to uh, to disappear. Let's yeah. show you what's going on. Hope you're having a great start to your day. It is 613. Let's get you out the door this morning. It's warm. We're at 70 right now at the Beach Club at the Charleston Harbor Resort and Marina. Rain not a drop out there this morning. Still some wet roads from last night's rain and the fog that's out there, but that's about it. We're in the upper 60s to around 70 across most of the area. 70 right now, King Street, 70 in Walterboro, 68 Goose Creek. By the way, Brad Octavia, it's cooler right now across most of the low country than it is in King Street. Hey. Kind of an odd morning. King Street's actually the warmest. How about that? Warm and breezy, late thunder. Take a picture of that. You want to back up here? We'll do that. Let's, let's back up. Let everybody take a picture of that where it's actually warmer in King Street than it is on Johns Island, Charleston, or Goose Creek. Doesn't happen that often. Here's what you can expect as we head through the day today. Warm and breezy, a late day thunderstorm risk. We're going to be in the mid to upper 70s through the morning, going to the low to mid 80s this afternoon. Look at that breeze out of the south at 10 to 20 miles per hour. A good mix of sun and clouds. More clouds and sun this morning. A good mix of sun and clouds this afternoon. Afternoon. Could be a stray shower or thunderstorm coming in late this afternoon into this evening. Maybe one or two developing by 2 p.m. back toward I-95. Then as we move into the evening hours, a broken line of scattered showers and storms will be moving in. Most of us will be dry through 7 o'clock. It's after 7 when we see that rain chance come up. Tomorrow's high around 78 is going to be warm with some showers. Showers likely Thursday turning cooler for Thursday. Friday showers, a few thunderstorms will be around 77. Then as we move towards Saturday, still could be some lingering rain around early in the morning. And then we clear out, cool off for Veterans Day. Veterans Day will be mostly sunny and 64 degrees. And then as we move through next week, we're looking at high temperatures in the 60s, potentially dipping down into the 50s by the middle and end of next week. A little too early to tell if we're going to be able to get there or not, but there are signs in the guidance that we could have some cooler weather moving our way as we head toward the middle and end of next week. Great. All right, we'll take it and we'll take the warmth here as well. So we don't have it's to stay like in the cold really here. not like we have a choice. <laughs> You know, know, think about it that Every way. time I see I something, well, you're like, I Laura. Do, I do the same thing. I'll sit here and go, well, I guess it'll be all right, but it's not like I really I'll come up with something tell. more clever, oh, I guess, next good. time. It's 6.15. <laughs> let's talk traffic this morning. Not much to speak of here on the road. We do have some slowdown here on 17 right there at the intersection of Main Road on Johns Island. And this is just our typical slowdowns as we get closer to 6.30 here this morning. All in all, not a bad commute for you here this morning. Let's get straight to those drive times because we don't have any incidents to report right now. Hopefully we can keep it that way for most of your uh, Tuesday morning drive. Downtown to James Island is a five minute drive for you. Walter World to Somerville is a 41 minute ride for you. 17A northbound Mount Pleasant to downtown uh, on 17 looks great as well. Less than 10 minutes. A live look here at the Somerville exit headed west and east looks great. Just some more cars on the road. 616 right now, time for today's morning rush. More than a million South Carolinians expected at the polls today for the midterm elections. Voters will pick a governor, attorney general, and e education superintendent, among other offices. The polls open at 7 a.m. A deadly crash under investigation in downtown Charleston as police say a car hit someone on a bicycle near the corner of Spring and Haygood. 
The driver and victim at this point haven't been identified. Have you seen this girl? An Amber Alert issued for 13-year-old Hania Aguilar. Police say someone kidnapped her Monday in Lumberton, North Carolina. Authorities say the suspect may be driving a green Ford expedition that belongs to one of the girl's relatives in Somerville. Six people arrested in connection to that deadly home invasion in Orangeburg that was caught on camera. Authorities say they arrested three men and three women over the weekend. The men are all charged with murder. The women say are accused as accessories because deputies say they knew about the plan and the killing. Next on News 2. A local group stepping up to help veterans after life in the military. We'll explain how they are making a difference when we come back.